Well, like I said in uh, an Instagram post, uh, once in a while, once in a very long while, a race like we just had at uh, New Jersey there, East Rutherford, MetLife Stadium, that mutter, uh, boy, the weather looked like uh, maybe it was going to wait, but then everybody's like, no, no, it's coming. All kinds of craziness happened. We've got Cole Thompson on the line here. Uh, I don't think he's a huge fan of mud racing, but uh, hey, Cole, thanks for uh, talking about this with us. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. All right, buddy. Well, obviously we want to get to the weather, but we got to do a little, uh, we got to back it up first a little bit to talk about uh, other stuff. I mean, I know uh, you mentioned before that uh, you, did, did you say you were supposed to race it in 14, but you never did race MetLife or how did that work? Yeah, um, going back 10 years ago, um, wow, eh? making myself sound old now, but uh, no, it was, uh, the plan was to go there for the first time when they had it uh, actually at the time. Um, the team I was riding for is now the Husky factory team. It was at the time KTM before they transitioned. It was KTM Rockstar. And um, actually the week before was a, a Houston race, and I ended up doing my knee, and that's kind of what put me out for the summer. So the original plan to race it in 2014 uh, was the first time they were going to have it there, and uh, I ended up not going. So this was my first trip 10 years later pretty much. Pretty wild, eh? It's funny to think that uh, you've been doing that uh, for as long as you have been, man. Time just kind of creeps up on you. But now, hey, so we got you on the phone here, obviously. Uh, where are you right now? Back in Carolina this week. Um, probably Carolina for the next few weeks before I head home once the series ends. Just uh, now that the weather's a little bit better and, um, you know, some good tracks up here and stuff like that. Staying at my buddy Stu Baylor's place, which is... Uh, kind of like my second home it feels like i've spent some time here in the past and it's always uh always a good time always fun to have uh people that you can laugh with and ride with it's uh a good experience right yeah now we kind of joked about that in our friday update interview right you're at uh, Stuart baylord's the uh uh M the shoals mx right and he obviously off-road you said you might be a little tempted to do some off-road stuff yeah we've talked about it uh me and Stu. uh it'd be like a one-off race kind of thing and uh, I said if if I did it, it would be more or less just get to the finish line. I <laughs> yeah. said I'd try, you know, do the full three hours. Or with me being out there, it'd probably be longer than three hours. But if you, uh, I, I said anything like that long, that endurance and stuff like that, you can complete it's just an achievement. But as far as racing it full time and as a job, I I highly doubt you'll ever see me do anything like that. Um, I enjoy the Supercross for the fact that it's you know in and out. You ride maybe. 45 minutes total in the whole day so um i'll stick to the i'll stick to the supercross indoor life uh over the you know three hours straight in the woods well now you've managed to make yourself sound old and soft yeah yeah both i'm just i'm delicate these uh <laughs> these legs and, and arms and body just can't take it like it used to be <laughs> yeah imagine if you had the rain like that and you had to do like a gncc race Ugh. Yeah, no, that's a. I was thinking. I mean, those guys uh, were probably laughing at my skills there on on, <laughs> on Saturday night when I was basically at the at the back of the pack trying to figure figure out the track and figure out my riding stuff. But, uh, all right, well, well obviously yeah. we're we're gonna get to that now. Let's. But the, okay, so the track was it was weird during the day. It was super hard. Then they'd have to put some water on it. Then it got slippery and dusty. What uh, what did you think of the actual uh, the track before uh, obviously before the uh, the main event? I thought the track was good. Uh, we rode, obviously, on Friday there. So um, walking it, it, obviously, you could see the gravel. Like, it had a bit bit more rock than you'd normally see in Supercross. But when you rode it, you didn't notice the, the gravel or the, you know, little bit of looseness that it had to. It had some good ruts, good lines, good rhythms. And then um, practice was good. Felt good all day. Uh, felt good on the bike. Felt good with the track. Uh, all year, i kind of been looking forward to doing one of the rounds on the east. Um, kind of similar to it reminded me a bit of Seattle how it rutted up maybe not as rutted a little bit you know harder base but still had some good ruts and technical sections to it and then um, yeah I, I didn't think it was I I think it was slick in a few spots because of it being like a little bit looser dirt but I don't think it was hard slick like I think it was more like um, just the dirt being a bit looser in some spots Okay, and what did the, uh, I talked to some people about the whoops too, did they end up being jumpers all day or could you skim them? I know they got kind of uh, kind of beat up. Yeah, so the whoops, they, they were pretty tamed, um, I think because it was soft, softer when they built them. So right away, they kind of broke down and 
I've been saying this all year. Like, they haven't been building them bigger, but they've been getting more cupped out. So, like, when they get cupped out, it makes, for one, harder to skim, but then also harder to jump because it's, like, the transitions aren't smooth. Right. So, last year, like, I, I made the joke, like, I could never skim them because they are so steep, but you could get a jump line going through them kind of consistently. This year, I've been better at just skimming them. So, I just start skimming them Saturday and skim them all the way through. But definitely, like, I think a couple guys were quicker to jump. A couple guys were like going like jump in and then skim out. And then I was just sticking just, just the right side, right down the tough locks. And then um, there's only eight whoops. So, I mean, it wasn't a big set like to begin with, but by the, the last practice, they were so broken down. They're just little, little peaks just sticking out basically. Mm, okay. All right. Now I know uh, qualifying. You know, you're always kind of say you're kind of around the twelve, thirteen. You ended up eighth place in this one. Were you? How did qualifying go? Were you happy with your riding and stuff like that? Did you have that? Uh, you know, the bike setup and everything. Were happy for you? Yep. Yeah. No, qualifying was good this week. I knew uh, they determined our gate pick. Obviously, kind of like the Triple Crown events determines your gate pick right for the heat race. So, knew I needed to get at least inside the top ten, so I'd have a good gate for uh, lining up, and um, did exactly that. Ended up eight um i think i was eight in both times uh practices and ninth in the free practice maybe okay so right right where i want to be um you know with the guys that had, were ahead of me were um you know kind of the guys i've been chasing all year but uh yeah overall i was pumped with it i was good with it okay so then in your heat race the way obviously it was an east west showdown not shootout uh showdown yeah, but uh, yep. yeah. So the showdown, you get out there in your heat race, and and I know I, I was watching. I was like, and I have I've written down. You, know, I was checking out my notes and stuff like that, and it looked like you had a terrible start, was what I thought. And then you kind of all of a sudden there you were in tenth, and you moved up to ninth. Like, take us through that heat race. What uh, what happened? You didn't get a good start, did you? No, I actually was. Um, I think second last at one point. <laughs> I thought so. Um, and then I just I made just some uh, decent passes on the opening lap, and then. Right after the triple on the first lap, you do that roller, and on the back side of the roller, uh, Jerry Robbins went down and collected, <clears throat> I think, two other guys. So there was like three guys piled up there, and that helped me um, kind of jump three positions there to get me into 10. And then from there, I think one other guy went down, uh, Yoder went down after the whoops. Right. And then when I was in ninth, I was in <clears throat> kind of a, a gap ahead of me, which was like maybe a second or two. And then it got behind me, which was a second or two. So I had a nice little race within myself, kind of with the guys ahead of me, but obviously kind of keeping the eyes on the guys. I mean, went good. Um, I wasn't doing the rhythm. So after the triple at the back, the only main triple there, and you'd go over a roll and they were tripling in. I was doing it in the first free practice, but I was just struggling to get it with um, consistently. So I, I went to, I would go double, triple onto the table, off, and it was maybe like half a second slower, but I could do it consistently. So I went to that line all day and it was, you know, consistent working for me. But in the heat race, when the track's fresh and those guys were getting that three up and then they were quadding and tripling, I was just, they were doing it too consistently in front of me that I wasn't able to get like right onto their wheel and do anything. I was losing a little bit of time there and then I kind of make it up another spot. So. That, that spot, I was like, all right, for the main event, if it's good, I need to get it. And then, sure enough, obviously, things <laughs> change, right? So, but, yeah. Okay. Hey, well, now, speaking of uh, sections of the track, so you mentioned that. Yeah, that was interesting watching that. Uh, that I mean, there were a couple spots. I was talking to one of the uh, the track builder guys, one of the dozer guys, and talking about the track and stuff, and, and mentioned that there was a couple spots where you could do different things, and that was one of them. But what about after the finish line, then you make the left? Did you triple in ever? No, I the same thing. I stuck to a rhythm that I did all day. So I'd go two, three, and then um, practice. It was good to go three again. So then you'd, you'd be right into the corner right. instead of having a single. But then when the race, they fixed it up. They kind of um, put a lot of the loose dirt towards like the middle where I was kind of laying it for practice. So I did it a few times in the race, but I was struggling to get like almost set up for the next triple. So I was just doing pretty much just double, triple, double single and uh get to the inside there 
Okay, now were you guys, okay, so you, you ended up ninth in that, so you're going straight into the uh, into the showdown, so that's cool. You had to be pretty pumped about that, so that's uh, no LCQ stuff had to happen. So, But then, obviously, the uh, the attention turned to everybody staring at their phones, looking at the radar, and uh, what were you, what was the thoughts, what was going on back in the pits? Were you guys, at what point did you guys know, oh, man, this rain is coming, we got to start getting ready? Yeah, so I think it was, um, we were standing there, and one of the camera guys for the TV broadcast um had said i i didn't hear it but um i was standing with somebody else and they overheard it they're like he just said that we're gonna get out there and have to come right back in because they've already reported a lightning strike eight miles or whatever like mm. i didn't even know what that meant i was like what do you mean eight miles like whatever we'll, we'll get the race at least started probably and then i'm like maybe they'll red flag it but <laughs> we were sitting on the line and then um the way that the start was you'd go down and come right back so and then go right across the start so I thought they were telling us that we couldn't do start, like we had to go kind of like practice earlier in the day. Like we had to go out and then he let us go. But then he was like pointing us to the tunnel. Like we all were ready to go lined up, walked <laughs> in. And then he was just like, no, headed into the tunnel. Got into the tunnel. We sat there for maybe two or three minutes. And then he's like, everybody back to your spot for your gate pick. And I was like, oh, like now it's definitely going to rain, right? Like, you know, they, by the time you even, you know what I mean? Like, you're like, all right, it's not even a, it's not even a question. So then we're sitting there, and then the, you watch the rain come in. And it's like 20 minutes. We waited, and then lightning. You start seeing the lightning, and the stands clear out. And it was such a weird thing to be part of because I said, I'm like, in all the years of racing, like, rarely do I remember like, you know, this stuff happening. I said, if it happened, it was like maybe at an amateur level, but like at, for my professional career, I've never had this where you just are waiting it out and you're just watching the track just get more and more rain and. <laughs> I was like, well, at least if it stays raining, it's probably not going to be as bad. And it really wasn't. But right. um, for that hour and some time uh, waiting it out, I was like, I didn't know if they'd get it going or if it was going to be like till one o'clock or what it was because they kept saying they're like, oh, it's just constant lightning. And we were just getting reports from other people. And they were like, as soon as the lightning stops for 20 minutes and we're not, you know, outside of it, then we'll put you back on the line and everything will go. So took an hour a little over an hour before we got the, the go ahead and got on the line and i mean honestly when i when i seen the track i was like all right it's kind of what i imagined it with the, with it being a little bit more splashy mud and, and not so heavy clay base and going in i think i was a bit on the conservative side on the opening laps because i didn't get the best start and i was just like all right just focus on just not wasting your goggles not doing anything stupid to put yourself on the ground and i was getting around good the first two laps but then I was just way too conservative and I kind of got shuffled back I made a couple bad uh judgments and rolled some stuff I should have jumped it and then somebody ahead of me rolled and like I should have j jumped to the left and I just made some bad calls and, open laps. and before I knew it, I was like last and I was like well <laughs> I'll just I'll just try to pick it up from here and honestly I just couldn't get going to where I was like on that on that I guess race pace and uh yeah, it was like, it was kind of eye-opening for me, like, just need to be better in those situations. Kind of caught me off guard, like, all day you prep for, you know, the, the race to be dry in some sense. You know, you're, you're watching the radar, but you're like, oh, we're going to get it in, it's going to be dry, and then when the rain comes, you never know what's going to come with it. But when you put, you know, the best from the east and the best from the west, it's a, you know, a, a stacked field as is, and then those guys up front, those guys were, were sending it, and kind of when I was out there running, I'm like, I just need to be better, man. <laughs> and you go faster so it's all good hey so when you went out for the, when you went out there to line up for the first you know before they sent you guys away had you guys already had you and the bike and everything all set up for mud or did you do that between when they pulled everybody out how was the bike all set up was it already ready uh so they they did a lot like it was crazy that was a, a funny part too because the teams had guys go back to the rig get stuff so my team went back i think they got Maybe just some tape, taped up some some areas so that the water wouldn't go in to the air box, I'm assuming. And then I don't know if I did anything other than that. They asked about hand guards, and I was like, no, like, it's fine. Because um, I'm like, your hands are going to get wet anyway, so you can see it's still raining. <laughs> but I've seen some of the teams, like PC switched out pegs. Um, they are doing a bunch of stuff around the air box and stuff like that. Um, Honda was doing similar stuff. I don't know if they did pegs or whatnot, but people definitely were prepping for it and uh my my thought was i was like it, it's it's a mud race i mean you either can ride or you can't i don't i don't know 
other than I guess salvaging the bike, I guess the teams were thinking if there is a lot of water, make sure that it doesn't get sucked in. So I think that was about the the most prep you could do. Some people put hand guards on, I think, and um, and then obviously just roll off. I was I was going roll off um, no matter what, and not tear off just because the roll off system is a lot easier, especially when you're panicked and you're trying to just uh, you know get your vision back. It's easier to pull a string instead of a tear off. Hey, now, did you have to pull in from new goggles? I noticed you kept them on the whole time. Or your your vision was good? No, no, no. I wish I could say I had. A, I wish I could have a, a reason why I sucked. <laughs> Sorry. No, to be honest with you, I think just it, like I said, I was a little caught off guard in those situations. I kind of came back and sat and debriefed. And I was like, honestly, it's just I made some bad calls early in the race, and I think had I just kept myself in the mix a little bit more, I would have been better off. But it's tough, man. Like you're you're racing really good riders, and and a lot of these guys um, that are out there, they're, you know, they were all hitting the rhythms. I wasn't hitting all the rhythms. I wasn't hitting all the jumps and stuff like that. And then I'm like, well, I'm like, looking back, I'm like, yeah, I probably wasn't as, I didn't need to ride as conservative because it wasn't that slick. But at the same time, I was like, I just didn't want to put myself on the ground or do anything stupid. So it is what it is. Right. So I guess, I mean, like, uh, obviously mud race and stuff too, uh, it's better when it just keeps raining because then it is just kind of slick, right? If it had started to dry up, then it would have just been impassable. But uh, so like the track getting around, actually getting around wasn't that much of an issue. It was just the the ruts and committing to the rhythms, right? Yeah. And we had luckily, um, because of them calling it off with the lightning, I think we had a much better track than the 450 guys because they had prepped everything. Like when we went out there, all the faces were fresh everything was good and right. it wasn't sticking so like it it did get heavy um in like certain areas like going through the whoops was tough for like i mean for me at least and i think a couple <laughs> couple people probably had moments and stuff and that's where like i was struggling just get through the whoops consistently like i'd lose so much time just because i wouldn't be able to like get through them with a consistent pace and then um through the rhythms it was easy i was just doubling them but like I didn't feel comfortable jumping the finish. Like, I just didn't feel comfortable with, like, I had, I mean, at that point, it's, you're, you're soaked. And I was like, I had limited grip strength. And I was like, man, the last thing I want is, like, flipping off and, like, throwing myself through the air or something stupid. <laughs> so, like, I was just being conservative and just going up the inside. I'm like, man, everybody was jumping it. And I'm like, I'm, I'm the only guy out there rolling it. And then <laughs> I had to triple at the back. I wasn't tripling. And I was just like, man, I'm like, Looking at that face, I'm like, geez, dude, like that's a big triple, and I'm like, ah, double it, and just be safe. And you weren't the only like, one doubling that triple, though. That's I'll let you know that at least. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> I probably and like I'm looking at like like the the uh, the guys ahead of me and stuff like that. I mean, like other guys that you know, probably like Jordan Smith probably had you know two or three crashes trying to you know like push the pace <laughs> and stuff, and like there was other guys that had crashes and. Probably if I just kept myself further up in the beginning, I would have been able to quick like get those guys. But I was just so far behind, like I just dropped back so quick, and then I was just like, man, at that point you're you're more or less just get through it and get to the finish. And I thought some some more people would have mechanicals and stuff, so I was like, just I don't know, I maybe played it way too safe for what the race needed to be. Right. Hey, you know it was funny too. Is uh, I don't. I guess you probably didn't tell. Maybe you would because your uh, your heat race coming up. But the uh, opening ceremonies, I'd never seen it before. And uh, Emily was there with me, and I kind of looked at her. And go, ah, uh, they don't normally show this. Remember, they showed like evacuation routes and everything. And I'm like, well, this doesn't. This isn't uh, boding well. So you knew they knew something was up. Did you notice they played that uh, evacuation video? No, I didn't. I didn't know anything about that. Um, the the like before the sorry the night show started yeah like for opening ceremonies they did like a, a oh, five wow. minute evacuation video oh wow I, i'm wondering if it's because of um the stadium because that's what the ama guys were saying they're like hey it's not up to us to make the call they're like um when the stadium gets notified that there's a lightning strike like all everything's off like right um you know like we couldn't even like get you guys started if we wanted to like they called it off and once they get the call that's it everyone's everything's put on hold so that was like for them they're like hey like you know we're just as frustrated like we're, we want to see you guys raise we want to get you going and stuff because for 20 minutes it didn't rain you know like we sat in that tunnel for 20 minutes it was like perfectly fine you could see you know everything like everyone had started clearing up but you could see you know like still like visually like it wasn't raining the wind hadn't really picked up and you're like oh all your thing you're like man i could be done could be back at the rig my gear, everything out of it. You know, you're just thinking like, oh man, like 
usually we're done by like nine ten. you know you're you're changed in 10 minutes you're you can walk back in watch the 450s but no we, we we sat there for another it was like 10 25 when they let us back on the gate so it was a full hour hour and a half probably by the time all the all the stuff went down yeah, no, trust me, we were all saying the same thing down in the photo den, watching it and waiting. And But you know, hey, you know what I think was yeah. funny, and, and I was kind of talking to anybody who was kind of from the north, like, remember when you're a kid, or, or even now, if you have, around, you know, in our parts, if there's a huge snowstorm, it's just funny how it, uh, I don't know, you're out in the driveway shoveling or snow blowing, it just kind of brings everybody together, and I, I, I couldn't wipe this goofy smile off my face walking around during those main events, because like, I had my stuff prepped, and I was okay, and everything. What was what was your, like, were you laughing? Were you smiling? Were you talking to guys and saying, like, oh my god, this is crazy? Like, were you able to kind of have that attitude, or were you just hating life the whole time? No, yeah, it was, it was great time. To be honest with you, I said, I'm like, my race might have sucked, um, but I said everything about the night was great. Like, <laughs> chatted up with everyone like it was just like everyone kind of let their guard down like yeah you know, for sure kind of the unknown nobody you were you never get put in that situation right usually we get in the tunnel like everyone's ready to go by the time we're in the tunnel because it's like you maybe wait there for 10 15 minutes and you're on the line going so it was kind of cool just everyone was just kind of like in the same boat like you know like how's life like he, <laughs> i said i talked to probably i said 15 of the 20 riders at least down there you know what i mean just had you know good conversations with everyone caught up and i said i'm like it was like everyone was just socializing i said it was like a a, a funny world to be put into you know you're a lot of these guys you don't get to you know talk to on a regular basis and uh, i said a lot of time when you do talk it's just brief but i said having all the time in the world to to kill you you kind of get to catch up and make the most of the situation so i said aside from the the riding part and my you know bad performance i said it was a great night it was a good day um take the positives out of it and uh i said i you know i'm blessed to still be racing dirt bikes in the first place so i said i i enjoyed it as much as it kind of sucked there to sit and wait it was kind of like i kept saying it was, it was history and i mean you don't always see this at a supercross event Right. Well, that's cool. that's cool. I was interested, you know, because I, you know, I saw, I, I, and right before they're in the tunnel, you're having a long chat with Jet. I was kind of snapping photos of you guys. You and Jet Lawrence were shooting the breeze. What were you, what were you guys talking about? Yeah, well, I'd, I'd, um, I'd spent some time in Australia where I actually was spending the time was in his home, pretty much in his hometown. So we were catching up and I was talking to him about that. And then uh, it's funny, one of the things like um, Australians always talk about is their bread and stuff like that. We're talking about just food and stuff like that. But <laughs> I said, it's, it, it, it's true. Like some of the best bread I've ever had in Australia. And he's like, man, I, he, he was saying the same thing. He's like, he, he's like, I've been everywhere over here. And he's like, that's one thing they don't have on us. He's like, they don't have the bread. And it, it's a little different. And um, he was talking about when he used to surf and stuff over there was right where pretty much where I used to stay um, when I spent my two months there. And I was like, it's a small world, you know, I, I, you, you got you know one of the best racers you know and it, it's just it's cool to see that like he's so um he's so humbled you know and so polite and so nice, nice. and i was like it's just cool to just talk to him about not dirt bike stuff just life stuff in general so yeah it's cool catching up with him that was before we even uh got the long intermission break there nice bread and surfing nice uh <laughs> nice yeah <laughs> so, it's, it's silly as that sounds yeah hey so you mentioned um you know normally you're done early blah 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 you get to come out watch the 450s did you come out and watch the 450s no i got out of there so um that was another thing uh i had a flight the next morning where people were like i didn't know how serious it was gonna be and they're like they kept saying oh they might be it might be tomorrow a.m we're racing I, like i had a flight at six <laughs> God, if I got to rebook a flight, like I, I, in that moment, you don't know. You don't know if they'll just tell us, hey, you guys got to go back. Like, we can't do anything. So um, that was uh, one of the things once I was done, I, I, I got out of there and got at least back to my hotel to get cleaned up. And then uh, was, yeah, pretty much to the airport the next morning and stuff like that. So I didn't watch the 450. I watched it on my phone and I actually just caught the last two laps of it. And uh, I was stoked, man. My, my buddy, um, obviously, Max who I'd raced Australian with and became close. Right. Um, you know, riding at MTF, he won his, you know, main, and I was so stoked for the team and Martin and stuff, you know, I, I, I talked to him when they were in Australia, talked to him when they were at MTF. I know how hard they work. And I was like, man, that is so cool for them to get that. Obviously it being the East West showdown and the hype and everything. And, and for them to pull it off, I was like, that's sick. And I was pumped for them. And then obviously the 450 topped off with uh, Bam Bam coming out there and winning and, I said even before that, you know, the, the day started, he was just, man, the guy was just, he's such an upbeat person this year. And 
I mean, he's always got a good personality, but just this year, he just seems like, you know, he's, you know, got a kid and everything's clicking for him. I'm just like, man, that's, that's like, that's good to see, you know, like him just having the time of his life and enjoying what he's doing. He just, I know he just resigned for two years. And I said like, man, I'm so stoked. He's a, he's a great dude. He's always treated me so kindly and nice. And I, I, I love to see it for him and, and, and his family. And I know he has, Obviously, it's a little conflicting with, you know, Bam 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 Bam. But <laughs> aside from that, he's a really good dude and a really good human. You know, anybody that actually goes up and talks to him, he's, he's a really humble and, and polite dude. And I, I, I respect that because I said I've been on the other side of it, too. You know, I still get that. You know, even with the Yoder thing, I said right away people will jump on the, oh, it's tough and dirty. And I'm like, man, it's not always the case. Sometimes you just get put in bad situations. You got to do one of those videos of you cleaning up around the house and stuff. Put that out there and say you're clean. No, I know. There you go. There you go. Bam did it earlier. This thing. Got, <laughs> got it going the right direction. But, it, it's funny you mentioned yeah. him though, because I mean, obviously, people who know him know he's a nice guy. You know what I mean, and all that kind of stuff. And then, but I just think it's cool that, like you mentioned, there more and more people are seeing it this year. And I mean, he's every time I put anything up on direct motocross with him, it just goes through the roof. People are just kind of all over it and loving him this year. It's it's pretty cool to see. Yeah, like, because I'd, I'd known him back in 2017 when I first kind of started um, riding at MTF there, and I was riding there at Supercross, and he'd come over. I was like, man, if people knew him, I, I think they'd give him a little bit different of a look. You know what I mean? I think people just are so quickly to jump jump on things, and I get it. Like, I have my favorite rider. Like, everyone has their favorite riders and stuff, and obviously you don't want to see your, your favorite rider, you know, whatever. But I mean, at the same time, like, man, the world's cruel. Like when things don't go, you know, <laughs> when they go bad, people, people are so quickly to jump on and, and not really fully understand the, the situation. Like, especially in racing, it's like probably if this happened in the nineties, you know what I mean? Like you'd be probably not like it'd be embraced, you know, a little bit more or something. But nowadays it's like, you know, frowned upon to have that kind of stuff. And, um, I think for the most part, like, it, what what I've seen is like the dude just he races hard like that's his style like he's you know aggressive he races you know with passion and, and, and aggression whatever and it's like I mean I said to him jokingly but I'm like people are like you know ner- second guess to pass him because they know that like <laughs> they got to be watching you know what I mean I said that's a tactic like yeah true I'll be honest with you you see you see a guy that like um you know maybe Sexton or, or Cooper that are like very like critical like when they're gonna pass them because if they're going to pass them, they know they got to get away and they got to right. get away quick. And I was like, you'll see some guys that like, like Ken Roxon may have, you know, an upper hand on them sometimes, but the dude has them so beat in the head. Like, you know what I mean? He, he, the guy's like, I don't know if I'm going to pass him, then he's going to be right there again. And you see it, you know, nine times out of 10, he gets them right back if he does get passed. So hats off to him being able to do that and kind of play that mind game with them. Right, yeah, no, it's cool for sure. It's uh, and I always kind of make the comparison too. Uh, fighters in hockey always seem to be the most popular guys in the change room, and the nicest guys off the track are the guys that are just the most passionate. And I, I you know, it's it's not the same, but I think it's kind of similar. Kind of a you can make the argument and the comparison. I think I don't know, but uh, that's, I always I always bring yeah. hockey into it. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's, it's, it's racing hard and stuff like that. And I think what those guys, some people don't understand, those guys make a lot of money when they you know go from third to second, second to first, right? So, like, those passes, you know, it's not just, you know, a little bit of money on the on the line. Like, it's a lot of money, the difference between those positions. So, like, I know if it's for a podium spot in fourth, you know, fourth doesn't have a bonus, but third does have a bonus. So, it's right. like, you got to factor that in too, right? Like, these guys aren't going to race for years and years. Like, realistically, the guys that, that do race, it, 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 it's maybe what – 10 to 15 years now like you know what i mean like tomac's been at it for you know 13 years barship 13 14 years but like it's not forever so like those you know those when you can get on a podium in the main event you got to take it yeah no for sure and you've actually famously said you know you you're there race day is race day man that's i mean you know your friends are at home you're there to do a job you're there to do a, you know you're you're not there to make friends so you gotta <laughs> it's, it's your job yeah yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that's that, that that part gets lost sometimes too, and it's hard to understand. Like, I mean, it, like I said, back to just everyone having an, uh, maybe an opinion on things and stuff. And I mean, everyone's everyone's right in their own way. You know, they're not going to be convinced otherwise. So yeah. I said, I'm like, I personally like Barsh has always been an amazing guy to me, and I'm like, 
they, every time I've, I've, I've come in contact with the guys, always been polite, always asking me how I'm doing, always, you know, the first one to be there kind of supporting me. So I was like, I don't have a problem with them. And I'm like, I, I, I get along with them great. And, um, you know, even this weekend, like I talked to Yoder before the first practice. And stuff. Oh, good. You know, it, it, it's funny. Like, you know, we both kind of said like, you know, he was having a bad day and he said, you know, the emotions got the best of him. I was like, Hey man, like I don't hold that against you. I said like, I don't want it going into this weekend and then the next weekend and the next weekend. I said, like, it, it, there was no beef with us to begin with. You know, I said, like, it was, I thought he was going to cut down early. I went out wide and, then, you know, he thought that I wasn't going to push that wide or whatever. And we, I said, man, you're doing stuff in milliseconds. So I right. said, like, damn, there's no, there's no harm done. I said, I'm like, I was like, oh, the only thing that I, I said I was annoyed was with the, like I said, going to the lap down or whatever. And he's like, yeah, like at the time he was just frustrated. And I was like, yeah, man, it's racing, man. And I said, I was young and dumb and did stuff that I'm not proud of, but he learned <laughs> from it. And I said, move on. And I said like this weekend, let's just have a good race and bump, you know, fist bump and got on with it. And we both, you know, did our thing. Nice. Well, that's good to hear, man. Cool. All right, Cole. Well, that's uh, awesome, buddy. That's uh, I, like I say. It's I wouldn't want to do that every weekend, but uh, once in a long time, that was uh, that was a lot of fun. I mean, uh, man, I got some pretty hilarious. Well, I say hilarious because I wasn't on the track, but <laughs> some pretty amazing photos. Again, you know, it's it's tough on equipment, but uh, for yours and and mine. But uh, man, it was fun to. It was fun, and like you said, this uh, last year would have been tough because you're on your own program. This year, you're uh, fortunate enough to go. Here you go, mechanic. Here's my bike. I got to go catch a flight. <laughs> yeah no shout out to the team um it's it, it sucks putting uh putting the bike through that and obviously <laughs> the cost of it and everything that goes into building a race bike and then just to put it through basically the worst thing possible which is mud and having to get it ready for the you know the, the remaining races it's uh it's tough so kudos to to joe um eric both the mechanics on the team and then obviously ryan and chris that uh you know do all they can to uh keep giving us support and stuff like that i said if it was me last year you would have seen uh me and chloe riding back to the pit because i said uh i wouldn't have even put my bike through that i said i wouldn't have uh i wouldn't have had the time nor the the money and all the extras to put into it to get the bike back ready going for the following weekend so that was always my theory last year when i was doing west coast i said if it's mud i know people would call me soft and make fun of me but i'm like i just Hey, I know what goes into building these bikes. And I know how much work and time goes into cleaning them. I'm like, you won't see me out there for last year. <laughs> right, right. No, that's interesting. Or maybe I need to spend more time out there. Maybe that'd make me better. So we'll uh, we'll work on that for the future. I said, I'm, I'm, you know, if I keep racing these supercrosses, it's more likely I'm going to see another mutter um, in the years to come. So <laughs> you have to keep, keep to keep mind. building to keep building stadiums without uh, retractable roofs in some of these places. Uh, it's bound to happen, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's confusing. I was like, man, we're we're in New York. I'm like, yeah, I mean, you're basically Canada at that point. Well, not, but I'm like, you they get snow. I mean, you don't see the Rogers Center open with uh, with an open dome. Um, <laughs> you know. So. All right, cool. Well, uh, okay, so now you're there. You're hanging out. We got a couple of races left. So um, yeah, I guess uh, hopefully we don't get any more. I mean, I guess these are these next ones are both open domes too, aren't they? <laughs> open stadiums. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think there's only, if I'm if I'm correct, I think five or six that are only closed um, on the. If you look at the whole calendar, I guess. Eh? Which, for whatever reason, when I when I first started racing, I felt like more of them were closed. But I, I guess if you take out like, um, I used to race um, like Minneapolis was a closed one. I raced one year in New Orleans was a closed one. St. Louis was always a closed one. Toronto. Mm -hmm. um so you start taking away those and uh you get to you know tampa they don't need it closed right and uh obviously like nashville and in new york and all these other places uh but i said i, I miss <laughs> i miss that part i was actually telling the guys that i was talking to i was like you know i got into supercross to avoid these, these kinds of races i said <laughs> yeah i got into supercross for this exact reason because i was over the, the you know the, the gnarly mud motos and and what comes with it but no it's um obviously something i gotta work on because i said we're gonna probably see um you know more of these conditions in the future it's not always perfect <laughs> yeah. all right cole well i guess you've got yourself a week off here you're gonna go find yep. a, gonna go find an off-road race then this weekend or what no no i'm sure Steve will be bugging me to do something with them but 
Hey, no, wait a second. Uh, just get ready. And- hey, wait a second. I was talking, uh, your brother, uh, Kyle, was at the race here, and we kind of started talking about you have his 450. What about 450 at Nashville? Yeah, that's that's what I was going to say, too. Is uh, it's, um, it's depending on weather. I know it's raining there um, a couple days this week and stuff, and honestly, like, with me being a West Coast only, kind of back to, like, when, when we talked about the interview there, it's just, like, um, obviously that comes first, so... I don't know. I haven't. I haven't really planned out too much yet. But I do need to get back on the 450 at some point um, <laughs> and get riding it a bit more. I only gave it uh, a couple days, and then I uh, quit riding it when I got hurt there before t- Daytona. Right, right. Well, I know. Uh, obviously, I speak for most of us here, and we say we we do know you're a, a very smooth and fast 450 rider. So we'd all like to see that one of these days. I know it's coming. But uh, all right, buddy. Well, uh, if we see you there, I know they're they're actually going to wait and not build the track. That was again the same guy I was talking to said they're going to have to whip it up in one afternoon. They're going to wait because it's supposed to rain right through the you know a few days, like you just said. And then so right. they're probably not going to build it till later than they normally would. But that means it's probably going to be dry. So hopefully that's all right. So maybe that gets into your your sign up plans a bit better. Yeah. <laughs> no, I hope, I hope it's dry. I said, I always, I mean, even as a, like watching supercross, I said, it's not always the funnest to watch uh, the racing when it's, when it's muddy like that. I said, it's much better when it's, you know, perfect conditions. And you can see the guys, you know, flat out. So hopefully it's a good one, not back to back waters. Cause I mean, the private tiers too, right. The, the guys that are, you know, um, doing it with their own money and stuff. I mean, it doesn't, doesn't help when you put your, your bike through that and then have to rebuild everything. So no, for sure. For sure. Okay, cool. I won't uh, I won't keep you any longer. I appreciate you taking the time with us here. That was kind of fun to go through. And like I say, once in a long time, though, those are fun to do. And I'm sure you obviously feel the same way. Um, but yeah, thanks for t- taking us through all that. That was awesome. Now I know you thank some of the guys on the team. Do you want to thank uh, anyone else before we uh, before we sign off here? Yeah, just give it up to the whole Heartbeat Hot Sauce um, Team Solitaire. Um, everyone that backs that program. Like I said in the beginning or last time we talked. It's uh, it's not. It's a huge effort to go race Supercross, and then all the sponsors that put into it, every little bit counts. So you know, whether it's a part, whether it's you know, graphics, whatever, it uh, it goes a long way. So um, kudos to everyone that in, that's involved in the team that does a really good job in uh, allowing me and you know others to have opportunity to go race. Nice, and this uh, this interview has been brought to you by Liat. So uh, it's funny because I got so many photos I have you from the from the front. You cannot see, you can't see. You're just wearing a brown brown kit. Yeah. <laughs> but then you yeah. go, you turn, Imagine and I, from your ba- I, then you can see the nice uh, teal blue stuff from the back. So uh, I just wanted to give a shout out to Liat. So uh, <laughs> and you kept your goggles on, so that's a good sign. Yeah, yeah, goggles. Shout out Liat. They had a incredible uh, roll off system there. No issues with goggles, which I was thankful for, and. Um, the gear's been awesome all year. Uh, I said to those guys many times, it's a really good product, and it's uh, always looking sharp on the uh, when we can show up to the gate, whether it's new helmets, new gear, new boots. Um, you know, they have it all for us. So uh, really big fan of those guys, and first year working with them, and, you know, hopefully keep working with them uh, down the road. Awesome. All right, Cole, we'll let you go with that. Uh, appreciate your time. And um, so what do we leave this? We might see you this weekend, or is that where we leave this? Oh, I, I'd love to say yes, and uh, I, it's you know obviously it's early in the in the week, but um, <laughs> I don't know really. Honestly, I I would love to give you a confirmed answer. I okay. just don't want to let anybody down. I got to talk with the team first. Like it's, they're just getting. I think today they're going all flying back. So talk with the team. Uh, need to get back on this 450. It's been you know five or six weeks since I've written it, and then um, just go from there. Take it day by day. Hopefully the weather does turn for the better and then kind of make my choice a little easier okay well if we don't see you uh good luck in the last ones for you and if we do see you we'll see you uh soon all right sounds good okay thanks okay see you man thank you very much bye-bye all right bye